Hello, I'm back. Whether you wanted me to be back or not, I don't know. You don't have to watch it if you didn't want me to be back. But here I am. And I need to, first of all, before I tell you a few more stories about this Brown Street Court area and the Peabody Essex Museum grounds here, I need to correct a wrong. Several wrongs, actually. The same mistake repeated over and over again. Pretty brutal. So the building behind me here, this is a Quaker meeting house. It is not a Mormon meeting house. I must have said that a gazillion times by accident. And I was so embarrassed when I looked back. Um, this, of course, is a Quaker meeting house. But were there Mormons in Salem? Yes, there were Mormons in Salem. That's why I got so darn confused. I have a lot of guests from Utah, believe it or not. And I love to show them uh, the house, the Nathaniel Felt House in Salem that has direct ties to the Mormon religion. Basically, it is where Brigham Young's daughter lived while she attended school in Salem. But, of course, for our sense here, this is not a Mormon meeting house. This is a Quaker meeting house. But while I am correcting my wrongs, and, you know, shocker, you people, I am not perfect. Uh, my husband could have told you this had you been interested in asking him. Um, but while I'm correcting my wrongs, I will also say there is some fascinating information about this Quaker meeting house. Not only is this considered to be the first Quaker meeting house in America, but it was also built on land and with lumber donated by a Quaker named Thomas Mall. Thomas Mall, as it turns out, um, pretty much exposed the Salem witch trials. And I'm going to show you here, although you cannot scan this. Uh, through our video or maybe you can I don't know you know I'm 61 I get confused about these things if you go to something called PEM walks uh, whether or not you are scanning anything here or you can see the story behind the story and you get a lot of information from them from these different locations but Thomas Mall whose lumber was used to build this meeting house on his land uh, eventually would expose what happened during the Salem witch trials. He was horrified. The Puritans had made this huge mistake. All these people had been executed. So just to clarify, yes, they believed in the devil. Uh, no, they did not believe in this case that they had killed uh, actual bewitched people. They felt Puritans made a huge mistake. And you know what? Puritans, you guys have been persecuting us uh, forever. So, yeah, you're not going to get away with this stuff. We're going to make sure that everyone knows this huge mistake that you made. So Thomas Mall, brave enough to uh, come forward and actually printed a paper talking about uh, the witch trials, distributed as far as he could before he'd be arrested because he was spreading this slander, right? Slander slash truth. Um, eventually, when he was freed, guess what? Maybe a lot of firsts. Maybe the first case of freedom of religion. Maybe it's the first case of freedom of speech, quite possibly the first case of freedom of the press, because the press printed the paper and the press had a right to print whatever the heck they wanted to. So there is a little wrap up of this, uh, almost said it again, people, of this Quaker meeting house. No Mormons here, but I'm going to show you where the Mormons were uh, and just snap my fingers here and head to the new spot. So here is proof proof that I was not just making this up to cover myself from making a mistake. Uh, this actually is a significant site in the Mormon religion. This is a home of Nathaniel Felt. This is where Brigham Young's daughter grew up. This is where Brigham Young's daughter lived while she attended school in Salem because they wanted to have a fine education and Salem was a place to go for that. Uh, this house very historic, uh, little known to people visiting from Utah. As a matter of fact, I would say uh, absolutely no one from Utah who's visited here that practices the Mormon religion has known that this house even exists here. Uh, how do I know, you may ask? Um, keep my eyes open while I'm walking the dogs, you know? See an awful lot of things around the city covering an awful lot of ground. So yes, there were Mormons in Salem. Um, just not in the Quaker Meeting House. So in my prior uh, walk through this area, I had mentioned or alluded to uh, the murder of a gentleman named Captain White. And that would happen in this house, which is the Garden of Pingree House. So I'm going to show you the back of this building because I somehow I think the back is much more interesting. 
So in this window down here, this is where a gentleman named Dick Crown and Shield would uh, likely sneak in to go up to the second floor over here. You like this is fancy, right? Very fancy uh, graphics have going on here. This is Captain White's bedroom. Captain White would be killed in the middle of the night with a club and a knife uh, in his bedroom. Sound a little bit like Clue? So there's some controversy about this. Uh, this controversy about whether this murder actually did inspire the Clue game. I mean, you know, Captain White, he's killed in the bedroom with a club and a knife. Sounds a little familiar. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I, don't, I don't tend to say absolutely anything, right? Uh, life is gray most times. Maybe, maybe, because George Parker lived right around the corner from this place, uh, just a couple streets away from where we are. But uh, more interesting, is that Captain White would be murdered because his niece's daughter had married a gentleman named Joseph Knapp. Captain White pretty much detested Joseph Knapp, told his niece's daughter, Mary, that uh, he was going to cut them out of the will. Uh, Joseph Knapp found this out and I believe uh, with no encouragement or even uh, um, any knowing from Mary, he decided that he was going to murder Captain White before he could change the will. Because if he stole the will and Captain White died with no will, everything gets split up equally, right? He still gets a share of the pot. So he decided to um, hire someone for $1,000 to murder Captain White. Uh, that's when Dick Crown and she would crawl in this first floor window, go up in the middle of the night, murder Captain White, who happened to have a big chest of gold doubloons. I don't know if I said that right, but he had a shit ton of gold in his bedroom. So strange, none of the gold was touched, just Captain White was murdered. Uh, eventually, yes, everybody would be brought to justice. Um, Dick Crown and Shield would be imprisoned. He would admit to a cellmate about the murder. Uh, he would hang himself in his cell. They always say he was hung by a handkerchief. Uh, quite honestly, I don't know how you hang yourself by a handkerchief. Uh, so, but I'll just repeat what I've read over and over again. He hung himself by a handkerchief, uh, and eventually Joseph Knapp and his brother, who also assisted in planning the murder and hiring Crown and Shield, they would be found guilty uh, under the trial of the century at the time. Uh, the prosecutor was a gentleman named Daniel Webster. You may have heard about Daniel Webster. Daniel Webster, famous statesman, um, famous attorney during the time. Uh, he would eventually find that there was enough evidence against them to have them both convicted of murder and hanged. So this building here also is thought and the murder in this building, the Garden of Pingree House, as I walk around to the front over here, uh, is thought to also be the inspiration for A Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. Also possibly the inspiration for some of the dark works of Nathaniel Hawthorne. So here's the thing, uh, I don't really believe Edgar Allan Poe ever said that this murder was his inspiration, nor do I think Nathaniel Hawthorne ever officially said that his works were inspired by this. So this is what we do, right, in life. We sort of make these assumptions, hey, Edgar Allan Poe who's from here. Telltale Heart kind of sounds like the murder. He was probably inspired by it. Maybe, maybe not, but you tell the story long enough, it becomes a thing. So same thing with the game Clue. Maybe, maybe not. Sorry, started to choke there, but hey, the show must go on. Uh, so who knows, but here is the Garden of Pingree House, uh, built in 1804. I will tell you that if you come to Salem, uh, you must visit this house if you're able to go in. We have not been able to go into this house since COVID, but when you are able to go into this house, the building, the furniture, the fireplaces, uh, pretty much all designed by Salem's famous architect, Samuel McIntyre, one of my favorite Salem people, and it is spectacular and well worth viewing. And here we have the Andrew Safford Mansion. Uh, at the time that this was built, right around 1800, one of the most expensive homes ever built in America. Uh, so this is the time when Salem realizes, uh, wow, we can make a really good living here. People are making boatloads of money, traveling around the world, trading with ports like Russia, China, India, Sumatra. Um, they would start to build these massive mansions as a sign of their incredible wealth. Uh, absolutely beautiful spectacular you can see over here this little summer house we talked about last time that may possibly be a little uh, retreat in your yard where you can maybe have some 
tea and cookies. Uh, open all the doors and windows. God forbid you would let your uh, skin get sunburnt at all, right? Because you're super rich. Um, but there's sort of a dark side of these beautiful mansions, and I'm going to tell you about that. So I am now across the street from uh, this courtyard that we've been standing in, right? Because there's a guy in a pingry house, a summer house, all of those buildings. And we're looking at a newly uh, restored home called the Daniel Bray House. This home is from the 1700s. So Daniel Bray would be a mariner. This would be, up to that time, pretty much a middle-class community, right? You have these people that are working off the ocean, uh, have a fine house, right? A house uh, bigger than the house I have, so hey, I'd live here. Um, but what happened is Salem starts to get richer and richer, right? These sea captains, these incredibly rich people want to build these uber mansions. And guess what's in the middle? Daniel Bray's house. Daniel Bray is like, hell no, I love my house. I'm not moving. Uh, so Andrew Safford house, well, you know, we're building anyway. The show must go on. So guess what your new view is? Your new view is uh, the brick of our carriage house. So there you go, you will not move. You can see the windows facing here. There are no windows on the other side. Your view went from this beautiful Salem Common over here, right? Open, green space, you know, not like it is today, but still it would have been somewhat green, to hello, here's your new neighbor. Uh, basically, screw you, you can look at the side of my house. So yeah, so there's the dark side of wealth, right? Gentrification, trying to push out the little guy. But guess what? They didn't push out Daniel Bray. Daniel Bray did not leave. Daniel Bray would be living here to witness, guess what? The murder of Captain Y. Do, do, do. So now I'm sort of skulking around the side of Daniel Bray's house to show you more of this, uh, this massive jerky move of building your mansion right on top of the little guy's house to try to uh, get him to move. Danny Bray's like, hell no, uh, I'm staying even more so now. So here you have Danny Bray's back door, right? On this side over here. Uh, you have his windows over here facing this building. Guess what? Danny Bray had a pretty good view of living in this spot. No, not the industrial fan that was not here in the 1800s. He had a pretty darn good view of this guy in the Pingree house. See the back door and the window that I referred to uh, with my expert professional pointing finger that the, uh, the murderer of Captain Webb would crawl into. Well, Daniel Bray witnessed that gentleman crawling in the house. When the whole community erupted the next day uh, about the murder of Captain White, how his body had been found bludgeoned and stabbed to death in his bedroom, Daniel Bray is like, hey now, uh, I think I saw the whole thing. He would end up appearing in court, testifying during that trial, uh, so, thanks to him, right, partly due to his testimony, partly due to his saying, hey, my house stands here, I like my house, so yeah, I have to look at the view of brick on one side, but I'm not moving, and for that reason, he would become a uh, uh, important figure in the trial of the Knapp brothers who would murder Captain White. So this video, it's just a shorty, kind of like me. I uh, found out that I lost two inches. I'm now officially five feet tall. That's what happens when you're 61 damn years old. Um, so this is a shorty because basically I just want to say I'm sorry. You created a huge faux pas. Can't believe I called Quakers Mormons. But just want to explain that, uh, yeah, they were all here. The Quakers, the Mormons, the Puritans, all in Salem because everything happens in Salem, people. Salem's super interesting place. So uh, hopefully there won't be too many videos about me correcting my errors. Uh, if there were, though, believe me, it would be a long series because God knows I make enough mistakes. Um, but the next video, I will fact check, fact check, fact check before I post it. So uh, so thanks for the thumbs down and, uh, and the thumbs up because now I have ready, wait for it, 100 viewers. Woo! 100, 100, 100. Yeah, go me. Anyway, thank you if you are one of the 100. Uh, thank you if you are 101 and up too, because hey, what the heck, right? 61, if anyone's still looking at me, I'm doing all right. So you guys, I will be back with new stories soon. Take care. Bye. Oh, and do tell what
what is this red line around Salem? I'll tell you later. Bye now.